Wiseman, but I do, I do really, really, really want to see him succeed. Yeah. I think All right. Play. Well, Peyton, you started yeah. us off with Okongwu. All right. Low key, I was watching this guy, dude. Gotta say, he copied every move I do. No, <laughs> you copy Brandon Ingram. Uh, dude, this like, spin move this guy has is absolutely elite. His face-up game is <laughs> impeccable, and he can also back guys down in the post. His post game is just so well polished. He's if if he gets the ball in the post, he's either gonna face up and swing or give you a fake jab and go opposite way. Um, just his post game is incredible. He's got incredible footwork, super athletic, great rim defender. The only knock I have against him is he's 6'9". He might even be growing now to like 6'10". Um, I don't really know if he's still growing or not, so I can't really make that assumption. But just to me, the fact that he could face up at such a young age so effectively, super impressive to me. But I can see this to a degree being similar to – I mean, I don't want to say similar to Wendell Carter because I think it's more offensive potential than Wendell does, but it could become that same situation where you get stuck in a system where they don't really know which position to play him at. Um, I personally think he'd be best at center, but a team like this Miami, is power they've got a lot of bigs coming off the bench. Yeah. Um, it's just – it's and they've got Derrick Jones Jr., who's obviously such a great jumper. Um, to help He's on basically the boards, big. And they've got a really physical team, obviously, with Jimmy Butler as well. So I feel like he needs the right fit if he's going to play center. Um, but I'd say Bam out of bio comparison would be fantastic. I agree. So yeah. I don't think he's got you to go wrong with. One thing uh, I have to say, like, this is a little bit further down the line, obviously, but, like, yes, he's six foot nine. That's a little undersized right now. But the NBA, I think, is trending in a direction of small ball compared to these big seven-foot guys. I mean – we're, we're out of the era, we have been out of the era of the big punishing guys uh, that, at the center position. I think that the value he brings at 6'9 outweighs the value he brings at 7 feet tall. He's already a great <laughs> rim protector. Like, I, I, I don't know. I think, I think that right now for the future, the 6'9 isn't as big as a knock as it would have been in the past. I mean, the one sure. thing I have to say about being a rim protector is it is college. I mean, Zion, to agree, to a degree, was a rim protector in college. Brandon Clark averaged like four blocks in college. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if comparing college blocks to NBA blocks are the same. I mean, guys in the NBA are going to be bigger, more athletic. It'll be interesting to see how he translates. But, I mean, Bam Adebayo is, of course, really versatile defensively. I think he's got good enough footwork on the defensive end to be able to you know, yeah. kind of pick up guys on the perimeter a little bit more. Often. I just think, like, his speed and athleticism, too, at 6'9", is better than 7 feet. He'd be a, bit, a little bit slower at 7 feet tall. Yeah, but, Archer, but when, what you're talking about with the small ball is the kind of small ball success from your center is the mid- to three-point shooting, and Okongwu yeah, doesn't, doesn't really have, have that any, at all. Yeah, um, he has none. But this is a guy I do really like. Um, he – uh you played with uh, Lamelo actually in Chino yeah. Hills. But did he really? Um, I didn't know that. Yeah, he was that big center they had. But I mean, uh, yeah, obviously, because. Uh, but he he plays like a he just plays like kind of like a classic. He plays like a classic game style. Like he's just a rim runner, rim protector. Um, his skill package is something that'd be ideal for a team that needs a center and kind of a team that does need a center. I don't see him going this early, but a team that doesn't need a center is Charlotte. Um, I don't yeah. I don't really see him going three. I mean, let me see another team that could – I mean, Detroit at seven, that could that could definitely work out. Um, but, you know, other than that, um, he is undersized at 6'9", uh, at but – and, you know, like the blocks like you were talking about, Peyton, that's something – out of pretty much all the stats in college basketball, that probably translate the least to the NBA. Um, you know, he's not going to be the tallest guy on the floor – but he's going to make up for it with his, like, his speed and his just his physicals, his energetic second efforts kind of stuff. Yeah. So he's a prospect that I really like. Um, and I do think the Bam Adebayo comparison is um, – one, really one thing I have about the Bam, like, I don't know if I'm mixing him up with somebody else, but he wasn't a great playmaker, was he? Coming out of college? I mean, I don't, uh, yeah. not really. I don't think yeah, he's a good playmaker coming out. I know, but Bam is a good playmaker now. I mean, he's one of the better playmaking centers. That's just that has to do with the Heat style of yeah, play. Yeah, that does have to do with that. Yeah, I think I'm over. I'm I'm over exaggerating that a little bit. 
but that's just something to look for, like look for, just because he isn't a playmaking guy, uh, really at all from what we've seen. But yep. I mean, he can obviously develop that, and depending on the team, I think the Hornets honestly are a really good team to go to for anybody because they have a lot of young talent, and if you can distribute the ball well uh, down there, I think it's going to be pretty. They're they're going to be a good team. And yeah, you pretty much could be handed the keys. They don't have. They're like one of the only teams that doesn't have that bona fide like guy already. But I do really, out of all the comparisons, <laughs> um, I think the Bam out of bio comparison to Okungwu is probably the most accurate just because, yeah. you know, they had really similar play styles coming out of college, very athletic for their – they're both 6'9", very athletic and strong. You can switch out to the perimeter. They got good handle, you know, pick and roll, lob threats. Uh, they know their – like, they know the rules. So, like, I don't know. He's a guy that I think can be really, really good in this league, and I'm excited to see him. All right. Well – um going down a very weird list that i have going let's go ahead i mean this is a guy i kind of want i kind of want to talk about Danny, bro. i want to talk about Danny. Danny. yeah Danny Danny Abdesha. Abdesha? yeah oh, Abdesha, i think it's that's how you say it. coming of luka Doncic. i mean my guy i don't i'm not comparing him to luka but dude he is good and i do not see a universe where he does not go to the bulls he is exactly what we need he's a wing that can play make with a good shot I, he has good defense, not great, but he has good defense. And he, I've seen him working on his shot. I mean, I've heard this guy's name throughout just following like Bulls uh, Instagram accounts and Twitter accounts. Denny has said multiple times he is a fan of the Chicago Bulls. He likes the Chicago Bulls. He said in multiple interviews that his favorite team is the Chicago Bulls. Like it, it's almost like a match made in heaven, especially with Carsonovas or Car- Carnesovas. I still can't say his name right, but. Uh, they, he, we literally got him because of the European scouting that he has. And he like, that's literally the number one, like biggest strength of his there. Yeah. I don't see a reason we don't pick this guy. I'm, I'm really high on Denny as well. Um, he's 19 years old, um, coming from pretty sure he's coming from Israel or yeah, at least he's from Israel. Israel, Israeli premier league. Uh, but he's just got really good size. Um, definitely some of the bulls need. He's he's coming in at 6'9", 215. He can he can literally play any position one through four, I believe. Uh, he's kind of like a playmaking ma- forward, I guess, like a point forward, I guess, by trade. Um, his I, his basketball IQ is very high. A guy that I I know the Luca comparisons there, but a guy that I really really compare him to is like kind of like a Gordon Hayward. Yeah, I've seen uh, a lot of comparisons. I, too. Yeah. Yeah, I was watching like a little NBA lottery thing, and they're like Gordon Hayward. Yeah, they're both a little, they're both kind of, you know, like inconsistent shooters coming into this draft. Um, you know, kind of definition of a rebounding wing archer. That's what you're literally he your player is a needs to he is a rebounding aspire to be. Um, you know, he can he can bring it up the floor. You'll see that there's like a fly. Um, you know, he's I think I think Denny does have the edge on him playmaking wise for sure. Um, yeah, he's a great playmaker. He's great, He's like a great team defender, high IQ. They got similar body frames. Like he's, I mean, I think athleticism is probably the worst part of his game. He's yeah. a good finisher. I just Luka, like Luca isn't the most athletic. I really see long. like no holes in Denny's game. Like he's just an all around, just great prospect. He's you really can't go wrong with him. I think if the Bulls are lucky enough to get him, he's gonna be just what they need. Yeah, yeah I, I will say that. I'd be excited. I low key think his athleticism is quite underrated. His highlights bro. They make him look like he jumps so high. He has um, had some good yams. I have to say, he is tall, but he's had good yams. Rushes. The the man's can jump. I I think his athleticism is gonna be underrated, but honestly, just the IQ he has, that's gonna benefit the Bulls in so yeah. many different ways. Oh my God, you have no idea. We have no playmakers. Yet. We have he can no run playmakers. The one too. He, yeah. can run the he one. totally could. I could see a lineup with Zach Levine at small forward, Kobe at shooting guard, and Denny at fucking point guard. That'd be crazy. But mm-hmm. like. The number one thing, or not number one, but a really big part of this for me uh, is if we end up not trading Zach Levine or packaging this pick, um, I I think that he fits perfectly with Zach Levine and Larry Markkinen running and transition and everything, especially he's a good shooter. Like, I don't think he's, I mean, people have kind of, I think he's a good shooter. I think he knocks him down, maybe not off the dribble, but he makes him if he's open. He's a bad. He's like he's a, he's really inconsistent 
from the three yeah. point I think that's a big I, knock against him. At least I think overseas. that he's. I think like what his I've mechanics seen aren't great. He doesn't really show. He has a lot of promise in that. off the ball. Yeah, I mean he's not a three point shooter, but he can shoot a wide open. He's like Siakam kind of from three point wise because you kind of just sit back there and wait for the the uh, drop pass to him. I'd say Siakam's a little bit more consistent. Um, well, yeah, but yeah, and I another just, thing is, his I just mean the way right? they shoot threes, not the clip they shoot them. Yeah, with. yeah. But my biggest question for Denny is kind of will he struggle is if he's going to struggle to like score the ball and and the big leagues like his ball handling is you know he's like everything else is fine but he's an inconsistent shooter um and I just think he might struggle in being guarded by more athletic players but I really don't think that he's kind of like an isolation guy he'll be kind of like a cuts um transition kind of guy he's just like a good team player um, I feel like he's going to make just the good, like the right decision every time, especially like coming down the court and stuff like that. So, yeah, All right. you don't have anything to say about anything more. Uh, who's, who do yeah. you have next? Um, oh, yeah, hey, one, go ahead. Who'd you say? Go ahead. All right. One guy I kind of want to delve into here because I was so conflicted on what I thought about him. Um, Killian Hayes. I, uh, I knew you were going to say confused, it. Honestly, like he's got such a good handle, such good. I'm just confused. His jump shot to me looks good. Um, of course, it's pretty inconsistent from what I've read. Of course, his highlights, he makes all of them. Um, but, you know, it he's just such a confusing prospect to me. I, I've heard a lot of good stuff, bad stuff. I was just wondering what you guys thought because I still honestly don't know. What uh, I, I see him as a project work. guy. I see him more as a project player than a guy who's going to come out and produce. I mean, like you said, he's got a good handle. He can shoot it okay. Um, he, I think it's just a guy you got to watch play in the league uh, to really, like, understand what his strengths and weaknesses are compared to these other guys he's going to be playing in the NBA. I like I like, I like, um, I like Killian. I think he, he really he operates well in the pick and roll. He really makes good reads. Like I said, he's an elite playmaker. Good shooter off the dribble. Um, he can hit some – difficult shots especially like setbacks middies he's got um he's got great size and length for the point guard position uh he's six five with a six eight wingspan so he's got that going for him i can see him being a he's like a good def- team defender like a versatile guy there uh he's like he's also good kind of like i don't know on the fast break or kind of in the open like out in the open you know he makes the right choice but i think the biggest thing he needs to work on his right hand i i noticed that and watching yeah. a lot of his film, he can struggle going right. He's a good, obviously, he's a good left-handed guy, but he kind of struggles with that. Um, he needs to work on his three. Uh, he's not really, he's not a good like catch and shoot shooter like from anywhere. Like he's really ball dominant. He can be hesitant. Uh, he's not, a, he's not the most athletic guy, but I, I still do like him. I, I really, have, if the Bulls, I was expecting the Bulls to pick seventh, as I think everyone was. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Like, I saw some memes where it was like the percentages for everybody, and then it was a hundred percent for the Bulls. And seven. <laughs> yeah, but I think he would have. If you guys ended up with that pick, I think you guys would have been really happy with Killian Hayes because I that's I really wanted him to go to Chicago, um, and I think he would bring like he brings to wherever he goes. He's gonna bring dynamic like playmaking. It's gonna bring some system, system, some stability yeah. to a roster, and he would have. Like a team like Chicago, he would have brought a lot of stability and, and kind of like being a main playmaker. But yeah, I think I he, just, he also brings a lot of experience to kind of like uh, uh, Lamelo. It's just gonna take him a second, I think, to adjust to the NBA yeah regimen. But I can see it take him some time. I mean, Braden, the way you described him honestly sounded exactly like Alonzo Ball. <laughs> not a great <laughs> shooter, pretty hesitant, not good off catch and shoot, really ball dominant to do anything productive playmaking i mean that might be a bad comparison you know but just based off of the attributes you listed he reminds me a lot of alonzo ball in that way um, yeah he reminds me of d'lo but really? you can keep, if you keep going is he six five or six four he's six five okay. but there i just i think from the biggest thing for him is his playmaking um uh, kind of like just he's not i mean his left hand is really good like i said he's got to work on the right hand pick and roll is nice um just the shooting off the dribble but the big thing that I think differentiates him say differentiates why can't I speak today? Differ, differentiates him from Lonzo is that the fact that he can't Lonzo's like kinda only source of 
at least in the NBA kind of that I've seen. I mean, he can be aggressive sometimes, but he's just a big catch and shoot guy. Um, and I don't really see um, Killian being that because I really don't think he can catch and shoot very well. But um, <clears throat> like off the dribble, that's what he's kind of his off the dribble offense is why I compare him to D'Lo. And I don't know. They just like, I don't know. It's he's an odd he's a he's a weird guy to talk about because it, it seems like he has so much potential and talent but is that going to translate mm-hmm. yeah i i agree with that i think i like his ceiling though yeah, yeah. all right um a guy that i kind of wanted to talk about um is isaac okoro from auburn uh i think he's really really good uh defensively mm-hmm. i mean i think he's probably other than maybe edwards the best defensive guy in this draft uh i've seen everything i've seen from him has been fantastic he stays in front i mean he's always guarding the best player he's always kind of like i haven't seen a play where he's gotten like beat and i mean i watched i wasn't even a highlight it was an analysis of his uh game and a film of him and i mean he just doesn't get beat he's so fast and quick uh plus he's big and he's got a lot of strength so I, I think he's like he has the tools and he's using them. But yeah, he's he's a really he's a kind of like a grit and grind kind of guy. He's really gr- yeah. he's really gritty. Um, obviously the the defense is there, um, but <clears throat> I think he is one of the most um, elite defensive players in this draft. He's he's just impressive, like on you know against the isolation, just team defense, kind of off the ball, on the ball kind of stuff. Like it's just everything. Like his communication makes him just such a probably the best prospect for improving um especially defensively and like just any team's defensive ratings so he's yeah. just a dog that's just that's also how he can he can finish really well with both hands he's a, he's a great finisher um and just his physicality too but i think some things that he does need to work on shooting yeah shooting point, is bad um rebounding from for a six six guy he's yeah and then his playmaking is a little eh as well but um kind of a guy that he reminds me of is like a Robert Covington kind of guy. He's a little bit shorter or maybe like a Jay Crowder, kind of like a Grizzly Jay Crowder. Cause he's not a good shooter. Um, but I do. He is one of my like favorite players in this yeah. draft. Cause he's just fun to watch defensively. Like he's, he's really, he's really good at like one thing and that just makes him fun to watch. Kind of just his defense and finishing. Yeah. It's crazy. All right. Hayden. Yeah. That's, that's all fair. The one thing I would say with the Coro is defensively, of course, he's great, but I think he's one of those guys, um, honestly, kind of similar to, Car- hear me out here, similar to Carl Anthony Towns in that if he does end up, end up attending the NBA Combine or whatever, and he knocks down X amount of threes, I could see his stock just rising. Incredible. Oh, well, yeah. Every team he does a workout with, it's like at least half the threes. I mean, honestly, that's, that's the guy whose stock I could see jumping up super high. Um, strictly because of his shooting, just he might have a good day and the stock will go up a ton. Yeah, I see like, the potential it's, there. it's hard for me to predict where he's going to go in this draft. I would say a team that could honestly benefit from him. I mean, this is tough, um, just because he's got such a unique skill set. Um, I honestly might go with the Cavs. Uh, really? That's really early, but I, I think the Cavs have the offense that they want. I don't necessarily love their offense personally. Um, but they have the pieces, I think. Uh, I, I uh, think a wing defender is something that Cavs sort of need. I think Kevin Porter Jr. is athletic and all this. I watched a couple games and he got beat off the dribble pretty bad a couple times. Um, mm-hmm. I think the Cavs do a really good job of spreading the floor, especially if they retain Kevin Love at the four. Um, they need a center, but, you know, if Cleveland even trades down, I, I just think they definitely need wing defense. Um, Sexton's obviously tenacious, but it's six two. Tenacious. Six three. It's it's gonna be tough to defend like Coro can on the bigger guys. Yeah, Coro is impressive. Very impressive defensively. Like I said, probably my favorite <laughs> defensive guy in this draft, other than Edwards. But especially with yeah, I mean Kevin Love's not a good defender. So especially with Love. Um, yeah, Love will probably be gone, won't he? I, I mean, you don't know at this point. He's got such a big contract that things might not. True. Um, that, that is true. For, draft capital so it i i think that's too early for him but that, that's just the team yeah. i'm looking at the list for a coro i'm like cleveland could stand this i, I could also see Atlanta potentially 
picking him up, but they've already got so many wing players. Yeah, they have Collins who I mean they, they have the, better. Yeah, they I have so many different wings. I don't think they can score yeah. I have a core going ninth to the Washington Wizards. Wow. Yeah, um, I thought about that as well. Kind of just they they have offensive he production. Needs to go needs to, they've got to have like shooters mm-hmm. around my guy. He he needs to be a much more consistent shooter for um his team to help space the floor out. So I think until he can kind of develop that shot, unless he has shooters around him, I don't really see him in a starting role. I still see him being a top 10 pick um, by all means, but that's something that he really needs to improve on. Like, this is just a weird example, but it's really relevant because I was just, we were just watching the game. But the OKC Houston game that had uh, Dort, I don't know how to say his first name, Lundgren, yes. Lundgren's Dort guarding Harden. And they almost, the, I know OKC won, but they almost lost the game because Dort had to, you know, come out because he couldn't hit a, corner three or anything like that i think he was like oh for five oh for six something like that and that really hurt him because then they didn't have the guy to lock down harden but you need the you need to be able to hit the three ball if you're going to be yeah defensive. i agree it's not just there's not just like straight up defenders like none those guys don't really you don't see those kind Do of well. guys any, anymore because it's just three and d um so if he can become a really i can see him if he can develop that three-point shot he will, will be like probably one of the best three and d players in the league and that's Saying it's something like the most yeah. like solid role player. And uh like this is probably the last thing I'll say about it, but I mean I kind of compare him to Matisse Steibel, but more athletic and with worse three-point shooting. If you can't understand what I'm saying. Uh I mean defensively they're just both so good. Yeah, Micah, I can I kind of think he he reminds me kind of like of Jalen Brown a little bit. Um really um, offensively, the- no, uh, not at all. Well, coming out of college. Coming out of college. I'm oh, sorry. okay, okay. Because Jalen Brown was not a great shooter coming out of college. They were literally the exact they, – they coming out of college, like, they're pretty much the exact same player. Yeah, I thought you meant now, and I was like, yeah. no, I don't know about that, dog. And Jalen yeah. Brown is a great three-point shooter now. Or I wouldn't say great. He's a very – He's not, a good three-point shooter. shooter. He's good. And, I, I would say the guy I was thinking about when I was looking at a four was Andre Roberson. Just because I, I think he's got the length that Roberson has as well as the same, like, sort of physicality. Um. Roberson cannot do shit on offense, though. <laughs> yeah, but I don't, I don't think Okoro's like. Yeah, Okoro's offense is not great. Although he can finish, but it's he's a just great finish. Well, but I mean, I think Roberson can finish well too. I, I don't think Roberson's completely a net around for him, or at least he wasn't before. Yeah, I know, him. but Okoro's just an elite finisher. Yeah, he that. really is he's actually. Kind of strong. Yeah, I, he's I, just I, so strong. He can finish through contact. Like he's, I just, don't, I don't really see it. I just, I discounted that a little bit. Yeah, his finishing is really good. But maybe um, I gotta watch some more highlights. I don't know. Coro's good. I like him. I think that uh, being at Auburn was a little bit different for him, just because the SEC is a little bit of a weirder conference to play in, basketball wise. But yeah, okay. the next guy that I want to talk about is uh, Obi Toppin. Um, I don't know. I didn't do any research on Obi Toppin. I'll go off the dome. I've got one more guy I want to talk about after this that I love. But Obi Toppin. All right. All right. This is this is my comparison. No comparisons today. That's been the big thing. I think Miles Bridges when I see Obi Top. I, I think Aaron know. Gordon. Who do you Aaron think? Gordon. Aaron Gordon. I yeah, you you told me that, but I dude, just me watching him for some reason, the only person I'm thinking about is Miles Bridges at MSU. Just his ability to catch lobs and honestly he doesn't have a, the best handle in the world. He hits the occasional awesome. open three. Um just I don't know what it was, but it felt like I was watching Miles Bridges play. I think Obi Toppin looked to me to be a little bit bigger, um, but he might not be in, when it's all said and done. Uh, he was playing against guys in college. But yeah, I would say Obi Toppin for sure reminds me of Miles Bridges. Um, I can see that, but he is three inches taller than Bridges. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. He has more height. He looked a lot bigger, but at the same time, I just the play style that Bridges has, I think matches up really well. Um, I think the perfect fit, and Archer, I don't really know. What, I think this guy could easily go top five, and I have him going fifth to the Cleveland Cavaliers. I think that's a great fit for him. Um, at I know nobody was really turning on Dayton games until Obi Toppin got there. Um, yeah. He was just, like, one of the most electrifying players to watch this year in the NCAA. Uh, he's just, just his supreme athleticism. Um, he's really – he's also got the, like, offensively – and I'm just I'm gonna say offensively a lot because defensively this dude's trash. But offensively, he's just quintessential. Um, he's just a highlight real guy that's gonna really bring excitement to Cleveland, which is obviously yeah. they haven't had. Any they need that. Ron left. Um, 
Yeah, we're, all I gotta say is wherever Obi Toppin goes, we're gonna we're gonna see him on House of Highlights. Yeah, yeah. On, on well, like you said, he could go top five. Um, yeah, Cavs are probably a good fit for him. I do not want the Bulls to pick him at all because we already have an electrifying guy that ends up on House of Highlights and Zach Levine, yeah. who also can't play defense. So <laughs> that would not be good um, at all. You can mark him too. Yeah, marketing. We do not need Obi Toppin. I think Denny's perfect. But besides that, uh, Obi just seems like a a great offensive player and a bad defensive player, which, depending on what team you're on, you're on can be good. But uh, I don't see him as a star in this league ever because of the defense problems. Right. I think it just depends on. He he kind of reminds me of like John Collins too. If you have a really athletic center next to him then I think he'll be able to thrive because, like, my comparison for him was Aaron Gordon because he's a guy that you can trust to have the ball in his hands. Like, he's kind of uh, – offensively, he's just so good. He just – obviously, the athleticism is, athleticism is there. He's a lob threat, um, good finishers around their basket. But um, I think one thing about Obi Toppin, he's just a really good three-point – like, catch and shoot especially. He can step out, hit a three. Um, another thing – what did I say here? Yeah, his finishing, too, is um, not even just with dunks. Um, yeah. I think he has the potential to be a very, very, like, solid, reliable three-point shooter, um, especially in the NBA. Yeah, I think he can, be a, nice stroke. he can be a good role player. And a, he can be a – like, honestly, Aaron Gordon is probably a perfect uh, way to describe him because he can be a good role player offensively, but he's never going to be the guy for a team. They, I just, I never see him as an all star, and in my eyes, that, that that's not worthy of a top five pick. Yeah, see, I don't, I disagree. I think he's just so like, if he has the right guy next to him in the front court, then I think he's gonna thrive. It depends yeah. on the team, but at the top five uh, picks, there aren't any yeah. guys in the front court. There's no good centers defensively within that top five. I think Christian Cleveland, Thompson. I don't think Christian Thompson. All oh, that. they still have Drummond. I forgot. It just depends on. Yeah, like, yeah. Obviously, he might not like in the first in the first like couple years of his career, like he's it's gonna be him like just getting his toes wet. Like that's what it is for everybody. Um, and oh, top, yeah. obviously, like the defense is something that can come. Like I think Kristen Thompson is a good defender. You know, I don't watch. I, I'm not watching every Cavs game. I'm not tuning into. He's it. not bad. Defensive. Yeah, he's solid. But he's a guy that he can learn. I just think. I can see Obi Toppin averaging like twenty points like down the road. So I really don't know. I can see that as a six man or not even a six man. Just in okay, general, I said you didn't even do player. any research on Obi Toppin. I'm, yeah, but what I'm seeing, like, what I'm seeing like, is not good. <laughs> I just see a lot of potential in him. Um, he does need to become a better rim protector. Um, he should be used more as a popper than a roller. Um, kind of when setting screens because people are gonna expect him to kind of. But he can do that is the thing. Like he can step out and hit. He's a good three level scorer. Um, I just think wherever he goes is gonna love his offensive production. Defense is a question mark, but I mean John Collins is great too. Like we he was in everyone's top ten power forwards list. So yeah. I see a lot of similarities in their game. I really I'm high on Obi. I, I would say I would like to be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, Payne, you were talking That's about somebody. Saying. All right, there's one guy I've had on my list the whole night oh, that I've I know. to talk about. Bro, Tyrese Halliburton. Oh, what? Man, I thought you said like Cole Anthony. I thought you were going to say Aaron Neesmith for some this reason. This man is elite. I'm I not, love Tyrese too, though. I love him. He's I've never heard this man's so, name in my life. I will not add much to the conversation. Oh, my God. He's so good. Tyrese Halliburton name? is the future of the NBA. I love, Jesus Christ, Peyton. I'm, I'm not even joking. I, I, I am joking. But he is a good player. <laughs> he's a great player. Uh, he's got range for days. I watching highlights, bro. He's hitting three balls from like five feet behind the three point line. Incredible defender. Great vision. He's just an all around great player. Like I, I don't see any holes in his game. I, I think he could get a tad more physical potentially. But like his mid range game is just so good. He's got such a long wingspan. He can shoot over guys. Um, Evan assists. I'm going to be honest. I watched like five minutes of this dude's highlights, and I thought he could be the best player in the league. <laughs> Jesus, Peyton. Someone's he plays player. for Iowa State. Exactly. Who is he playing? Dude, <laughs> Iowa State's a good school. Okay. What's in the Big 12? They play against good competition. 
Aren't they in the Big 12? I don't know a lot about college. Like, I, I don't know as much about college, but I know he's a good basketball player. And I I, I think he potentially, you know, if, if he falls, I mean, where is he, like, projected right now? Like, I don't even know. I've not he, heard his name. So I probably. have him, in my mock draft, I have him going 10th to the Suns. Yeah, okay, that's actually a really good pick for the Suns. I, I would say that he's potentially the best point guard other than Lamelo on the floor. I think that's fair. Mm-hmm. I I don't um, see any other point guard being as good as him just yeah. because the range he has plus the vision is just so elite. Um, so, he was great in transition too. Just dude, he's he's the full package. I don't see any flaws. Yeah, Peyton, you were talking about how well you said you really like you think he can what do you what do you say exactly about his like potential? Like you said he's I think he has a lot of room to grow. I think right now he's a pretty polished player. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I, I, I'd I, say he's a win now guy. You're not this drafting is my favorite project. point guard in the draft. And this is a draft with Lamelo Ball, Killian Hayes, ton of guys. This is my favorite point guard in the draft. Um, Tyrese Halliburton obviously went to Iowa State. Um, out of all the po- – like, the, you know, you get to the top four point guards that we were talking about, I'd say he's the best defender out of all of them. Um, he's just got good length. He's got – he's quick. Um, he's – I mean, I like I really like him defensively, uh, especially like off the ball. Um, but the biggest thing, obviously, for him is his is his playmaking. Um, I he's, I think he's an elite playmaker. But I'm reading what I'm watching right now is all playmaking. No, Literally, I, was say, all I, I thought you were talking about playmaking as an issue. And I was like, bro, he's a great playmaker. No, that's what great. I'm saying. And the clips, were, okay, yeah, sorry, I, I misread yeah. that. You're saying that but, was an issue, and I was like, bro. The reason why I don't have him going earlier is he's 6'5", 175. He's very slender. Um, he's not a formidable isolation defender, but, like, off ball, he's, like, he's a good team defender. I know I've said, I've said that a lot. Yeah, yeah. But um, I think that I think that the size is a big thing for him. Obviously, we saw Ja Morant was good, but he's not, like, a high flyer like um, Ja is. Um, but he's got, a, like, offensively, he's got a – he just got a deep bag of tricks. Um yeah, I think he's a perfect fit for the Suns. Like I said, his own offense comes mostly from deep. Um, he's a really good shooter. Uh, like he's a good spot up shooter. He's, he's good like, at getting to the he's basket. Got a soft, yeah, he's got a soft touch inside um, when he's in the paint. But kind of, I know we've praised him a lot, but the big knocks besides his the fact that he's pretty weak and slender, he needs to bulk up, that's strength and stuff, is that he can kind of. I, I noticed this. I watched like one Iowa State game. Um, <laughs> But he, I, I saw that in that, that like he's some at sometimes, like I know he's averaging how many assists? He's averaging seven, six and a half. Six, yeah, six and a half assists. But he can be a little too unselfish at sometimes. Um, like he doesn't really, he's not a guy that can take over a game. Um, That's fair. So I agree with that. Like some of his, <laughs> like, some of his games, he's like attempting single digit shots. Like he's a pass first guy for sure. But what like that? I think that fits in perfectly in the Suns because you got Devin Booker who's gonna just be the complete. So I just like if if he can and if he can just bulk up, I really think he'll be great. Oh, yeah, yeah he's watching. really slender. And I'm thinking he has a weird shooting form. Though, All right, so. I want he does. See. It is weird. He kind of looks like Eric Gordon. <laughs> kind of like minus twenty nine. Yeah, I want us to <laughs> trade up for him. I dude, just he looks so good. I, I understand the weight concern. I mean, I I didn't even realize he was that thin. He's almost as thin as me think about it but if he's uh, if he's next to drew though which would be crazy dude like, oh the my. Defense there. Hayden, don't get your hopes up i don't know if he's gonna drop to the pills no we trade lonzo for the oh uh, okay pick. and um well shoot the wizards don't need him we'll trade him in the Knicks. we get the eighth pick we'll take killian hayes then dude lonzo to beat. new york dude we'll finally get him back in a big market lavar would <laughs> he'd go crazy lavar would pop off i i would love that <laughs> Personally. Lamar would have a better career in New York than uh, Lonzo. I mean, we already have, a, <laughs> like, we upgrade on every facet when we uh, pick this guy outside of defensive switchability, I think. I think Lonzo's mm-hmm. pretty good. Yeah. His, guy in defense, but. his strength weight is just pretty glaring. But, I mean. But that's something, you know, that's. that's an you can work on that. That is something that you can yeah. 100% get better at. I mean, we've seen guys in the past, obviously, gain weight and play great like Joel Embiid people like that but I mean at the same time I feel like New Orleans is a team the Suns as well that don't have a timetable that is you have to be good now I mean they've got developmental guys on both of these teams yeah um that they can give a couple years I personally think that 
whatever team he goes to, he's going to thrive at. I mean, I don't see any issues with him going anywhere other than Cleveland just because they've already committed so much to the guard spot in these drafts. Um, but I, I would say Phoenix, honestly, is such a good fit for him. Um, yeah, I really think that. He's a pass first guy with Devin Booker there. I don't think he's got anything to worry about offensively. The only issue I would have with that potentially is I don't like his defense, uh, like isolation wise, as you mentioned with the size. He's great in passing lanes. Yeah. Um, Steals wise. Definitely. But, you know, with Devin Booker, I mean, Devin Booker's not necessarily the best defender in the world either. So, Mikhail Bridges. Especially with all, those, coming, so. all of the uh, energy is he uses on offense. But if um, he comes off the bench, then that's not that big of an issue either. Yeah, that's sounds, true. Yeah. They just have Ricky Rubio for keep Rubio in starting lineup. I I like that. The Suns can't go wrong with that pick. Honestly, I don't think any team can draft good just because he's a guy that you can you know develop. Yep. Um, but yeah, that's the guy I really wanted to talk about just because. All right. He, he honestly okay. stood out to me as the guy I enjoy watching. For sure, I think he All does right. really like him. But uh, real quick, did you guys do any? Did you guys like learn anything about Devin Vassell? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. He's three okay. and D guy. Yeah, this this dude. And if you guys want to talk about him, um, he, he's probably, in my opinion, going to be the best role player in the league. And at one at one point in time, wow. um, he's only nineteen. Um, pro, he's top. I don't know if I'd say top, but he's one of the best defenders in the draft. I'd say uh, he's six six with a six ten wingspan. Um, he's got quick feet. He's a versatile scorer. Obviously, big. 3 and D guy, but he can also hit midi, scoring the plays, three level score with the defense. Um, like when he chooses to light, when he chooses to like, I guess like step it up, he steps it up. And he also has a high energy. Um, he's like a, he's got a motor. He's contagious to his teammates um, on both ends of the floor. Or no, he's not six six. He's six seven. I read that wrong. Um, he's six seven one ninety five. Um, he's not the biggest small forward, but he could maybe run some shooting guard. Even though he can guard pretty much like one through four, I'd say more, maybe more like two through four, but as he matures, I think he kind of polishes off his defensive game. He'll be able to guard like, like a lot bigger guys, but he's a guy that I'm, I'm really high on. And yeah. I think he's good, mind. but he's going to go later. Not necessarily because he's a better, a worse player, but a lot, I don't think he's going to be, like you said, he's a, he's a role player. Uh, but these, these teams in the lottery are, I don't think they're really picking role. Oh, actually the Celtics, if he, I don't know if we'll go that low, and but he would. I have would I have him going the Celtics. I have him going eleventh to the Spurs because he's yeah, that's like good. kind of that is good because they have those Popovich guards system. there. Yeah, he'd slide perfectly into the starting small four because they're running like three guards. That's a good thing. Um, that is actually good. One I of the big see reasons. There. Another one of the big reasons that the Spurs struggled um, on the offensive boards this year is because of the size of those like those three guards, of course. So I think that. Like he could be a guy that could instantly come in and contribute for Greg Popovich, and Greg Popovich could turn him into a start, really. Um, but kind of my knocks against him is um, defensively, or not defensively, um, offensively, he can't create his own shot, really. Um, not really much of a playmaker. But I just think as a role player, he's going to be perfect. Just like, yeah, kind of starting, kind of like, I mean, he could honestly go to a contender and he'd be like, a, yeah, that's a what I'm saying. Player. Like, I, like he'd be a perfect on the Rockets, on the great. Lakers, anywhere. But, like, down the line, I think he's going to be one of the best. I think he's going to be, like, a championship guy. Like, he's going to be a guy to have on your team to win a championship just because of his, um, you know, like, his 3 and D. Yeah. Right. And the attitude he has is pretty important. But go mm-hmm. ahead, Paige. Um, I mean, I don't know what it is with Florida State producing these, like, incredible defensive players. Um, Jonathan Isaac, yeah. of course, also went there. Just the switchability that a lot of these players come out of Florida State have honestly it's super impressive i don't know if it's the way they recruit just that they recruit guys that are more switchable um whatever they're doing they're doing it right for nba prospects at least. yeah another guy literally at florida state right now is patrick williams who's kind of also good oh yeah that's uh, i saw player. him um i never got up to reading about him but like just but he's six eight six eleven wingspan yeah he's gonna be nice to they've play. always got some versatile defenders that can just i mean honestly really defend any position in college um maybe not in the nba with centers but I mean, Isaac can defend everything. This guy can defend. I would say probably one through four, honestly. Four might be a stretch against some teams. Um, but, of course, great three-point shooter. I mean, honestly, if he can turn into, like, 
a really good three point shooter and just a guy that you can consistently see, you know, make buckets. I would say he could later on in his career remind me of Chris Middleton. I know that's a great mm-hmm. shooter, but just because Middleton, the reason he got to the place he is today is because of that defense he played. Um, obviously, he wasn't the guy taking the shots until he got some minutes, and he got those minutes because of his defensive abilities and length. Um, but he just reminds me of a guy that, you know, not really going to create his own shot. But yeah. He's, gonna he's never going to be, like, the number one or number two option. He's just going to be a great starter. Yeah. Like, he's going to be a starter for his whole career, pretty much. I 100% and agree with that. He's going to just – he's going to be, like, just the perfect, like, guy to have on your team. Like, he, yeah. he can literally play anywhere, and he's going to be, like, a positive impact player. I agree. I think he's going to be really important. Like you said, on a championship team, like he's good. He can be uh, one of the biggest parts of a championship team, but all right. Um, is, is that it kind of for you guys? Do you have any other players? You want to I had nobody else to talk about players as well. I mean, Brady, yeah. there are a couple guys you wanted to mention. I know. Um, oh, well actually Cole Anthony, Cole Anthony, did you guys yeah, have Cole Anthony, I, you know, I mean, he's kind of boring. <laughs> I mean, we talked about him on Xbox a little bit. Of, yeah. There you go. I think the main thing for him is just – I think he's a good, like, uh, playmaker, but just – he was in a kind of a bad position in North Carolina. There's no really – there's, Nobody like, around no him. Floor, floor spacing um, on that team, so he couldn't really drive. So most of his um, points came off, like, kind of difficult shots from three and kind of, you know, like – he just couldn't get into the driving lane, which is a big thing. Like, he had nowhere to go. Um, yeah. But there, there's some times where he looked like – like a superstar and there are other times where he's completely folded so i mean it just depends on like kind of which cole anthony that you're gonna get um he grinds we have a current derrick rose i said that um he knows how to get his shots off he's crafty around the basket good ball handler keeps it on a string um kind of like he's more of a score first kind of point guard i'd say um i don't know i think the playmaking is something that can come with with time but just his shooting his quickness and i think those two things are going to be um, – make him a Yeah, he kind of reminds me of uh, Pistons Derrick Rose a little bit, just the way he gets to the basket and the fact that he doesn't have, like, the greatest three-point shot. Yeah. Also um, kind of Drogic, too, Gordon Drogic. Yeah. Um, you know, I obviously didn't do a lot of research on him other than when we talked about him, but something that I would be intrigued by is his size already. Um, I know he's not the biggest – like tallest guy in the world, but the weight honestly is something that I think is really valuable for the NBA, especially for a guy that you know probably won't go lottery, maybe late lottery. Um, he can really you know hold his own against some of these NBA guys. He may not be the most versatile defender switching wise, um, but I, I feel like you know if he's got the size to play, I mean he could you know potentially contribute in some of these meaningful games and meaningful minutes. Uh, guys like Trey Young, you know, I mean. It's, it's almost like they've got to get taken out of the game um, if they've got to get a stop. And I feel like if it's a player, you know, that you want to have a focal, have a focal point around for, like, your franchise or, you know, you always want your best players on the court regardless of the situation. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, you know, we talked about it with George Knight, the fact that he could hit a three. I think the fact that some of these guys are too small to be able to play defense at the end of the game is something that a lot of guys struggle with coming out of college. Yeah, initially, I don't really see Cole Anthony being – I think he's going to be a great six-man. Yeah, I, initially. I don't know if I want to give him the starting range because of his defensive question marks, um, but I do like the scoring he has. That's some, like off the bench, you really can never go wrong with that, especially from a point guard. All right. Yeah. Well, I mean, Braden, if you choose a guy for the Grizzlies, who are you going with? Say that again? If you got to choose a guy that the Grizzlies take, um, oh, they don't even yeah. have to pick. Yeah, they we have, have the pick. 40th pick. Yeah, that's tough. But, I mean, some other guys, I'll just throw some names out there that um, that I like. Tyrese Maxey from Kentucky. I like him, too. I didn't watch uh, him, but I saw him play a couple of games. I watch Precious a lot from Memphis, Precious Achua. Um, he's just really good physical rim protector, pick and roll defense kind of guy. He's just another gritty guy. Um, Sadiq Bey from Villanova. Um, obviously, Aaron Neesmith, watch him a lot too. There's just there's just a ton of good players in this draft. Like like we were talking about, this kind of this draft doesn't really have a lot of like it's not it's not star that star heavy. It's really consistently like you can you can get probably a lot of like the same amount of talent. You can get a great guy and like at the end of the lottery, and you can also get a great like contributive guy like 
in the uh, in the second round. Like there's some guys like I'll throw some more names out like Desmond Bain from TCU. I really like um, Xavier Tillman, Leonardo Balmero. Just like there's just all these guys that. Oh yeah, Jordan Nora too. There's just so many dudes that can come in and just like help a team um, just be great. Because the Toronto Raptors, those like the, their championship team last year, they didn't have a single lottery pick. They like Kyle Lowry, Marcus Gasol, all those guys. Like they were like second round picks, G League guys that just in the right system they can just really come and contribute and yeah, in the right like team. Yeah, they just they're just great guys. Like they kind of these are guys that like played more than kind of played more than one year in college and kind of just are I don't know they just have like that kind of factor about them I, I really like this draft class in that sense but um just the, I think the superstar the lack of a superstar kind of guy except for maybe um Wiseman not Wiseman Edwards and Ball I yeah, think those it's are the two guys that stand out for me like uh, as superstars draft. so yeah. to speak yeah it's um gonna, it's gonna be fun to see how everything plays out um, yeah and I would say that a draft like this would be really beneficial for a team like Portland um mm-hmm. You know, that doesn't have the depth necessarily that a lot of these other teams have, but are going to yeah. be able to pick up a guy that can fill that role. This, this is a good like draft that, that don't have a lot of depth. Um, but, you know, with all that being said, uh, if you guys, anyone listening, has any sort of draft suggestions or any guys you want us to look into, feel free to let us know in the comments or your team who you yeah. want them to draft. Um, and I'll hit you guys up too. I got some, I got, I can, like, I made a whole draft class on 2K. Yeah. He's, he's my man has done research. He knows them all. I've been doing research since day one, man. No. There's a ton of guys. It's gonna be fun. I all think right. we might, yeah, we'll be down to like. It's been a great pod. Yeah. Appreciate it.